Does your mind cause you problems? I'm not addressing those who suffer from mental disorders like anxiety and depression. I really sympathize with them and can only advise professional help. Today, many such disorders go untreated. While I think the following advice can help anyone, I'm speaking primarily to those who don't have a clinical disorder, but who are troubled by their minds. In other words, everyone else. The controlled ramblings of the mind are experienced, especially when one is trying to meditate. Yoga practitioners will know what I mean. The mind behaves, it's like a monkey, jumping here and there, generally up to no good. So what to do about our monkey mind? If you go online, you can find courses ranging from a uh, one-off download for $15 to a 12-week session at $250. And they advertise benefits like living the life of your dreams, boost your confidence, change your future, and so on. Do I believe they work? Maybe some of the benefits do, but if they do, the result is temporary, and more than that, they lead to nowhere. In short, they are a spiritual dead end. So then what to do? I mean, controlling the mind. Let me begin at the beginning. What is your mind? One thing that it's not is the brain. The former is the software and the latter is like the hardware. So what is it? I answer, it's that part of your inner being that accepts and rejects both objects and conditions. The mind wants this and then it wants that. You know what I mean? For example, you fall in love with someone and then what happens? You fall out of love with them. And then beyond the mind, and here's a very important point, is another aspect of you, a higher aspect, the ego, which is contaminated by two basic misconceptions. I am this body and things are mine. And to fulfill these misconceptions, the ego is full of so many other desires. Take the example of falling in love again. There's a desire to be intimate with someone, to enjoy their bodies, to make them yours. And then the mind scans the field for prospects and accepts someone. And when that desire later meets with disappointment, that's inevitable, then the mind rejects that person in favor of somebody else. It's desires like this that in part or in whole are reflected in the mind. In other words, the mind simply acts on the illusory desires of the ego. It's like a mirror of the ego. From this simplified explanation, it should be clear that attempts to control the mind, like those advertised online, are band-aid approaches to issues. They cover up the symptoms, but do nothing to treat the underlying problems. So what do I suggest? The Bhagavad Gita points out that the mind is the intermediary between the ego and the senses of action. So, it suggests that you tie down the mind on both sides by regulated activity and by purification. In other words, while the mind is restrained, the impure desires of the ego that prompt the mind to act in the first place are neutralized. That means two things. First one is control your senses. And now here are four tips to master the senses. Number one, control your speech, control what you say. This means speak words that are truthful, pleasing, beneficial, and not agitating to others. And above all, regularly recite the Gita. Number two, control your anger. Don't easily take offense when someone criticizes or offends you. Let those words be like water off a duck's back. Be tolerant. Number three, control your eating habits. Eat at regular times and in moderation. Not too much, not too little, and eat what does the least harm to others. Be a vegetarian or a vegan. And number four, and this one's a toughie, practice restricted sex. That's right. Don't be promiscuous. Stick with your life partner and target at the goal that sex is only for procreation. In addition, you can practice overall cleanliness, show respect to superiors, 
parents, elders, and spiritual guides, just to name a few. And avoid useless diversions, video games, and movies. Okay, that's about controlling the senses, but we know we can tie down the mind with regulation, but as long as the ego has false desires, the mind remains a monkey waiting to be set free. So what to do? Here's the second thing to achieve, lasting mastery over the mind. Purify your ego of false desires. And that's possible by the practice of bhakti yoga, the only yoga system that can free the mind of all past impressions, wild fancies and uncontrollable desires. Hatha yoga, meditation and speculation will not do and here are two things you can do. Study sacred texts like the Gita and systematically apply their teachings in your life. They're not bedtime reading, but textbooks. Number two, chant the divine mantra of liberation. Any old mantra will not do. It's the mantra I've mentioned on earlier videos that is empowered for the goal that you seek. And that is the Hare Krishna mantra. Do you know that the very meaning of the word mantra is the divine sound which liberates the mind? So if your monkey mind is bothering you, and if you want a real solution, then chant this mantra of liberation. And that's it. These are the two things to quiet your monkey mind. On one side, control your senses, on the other side, purify your ego. And as desires are stilled and purified, the mind automatically becomes peaceful. And at time, it becomes your friend, helping you on your spiritual journey. That is what the mind is originally created for, to help you select those objects or conditions that are favorable for spiritual development and for freedom from material entanglement. The Gita says, the mind can be your enemy and your greatest friend. Which one it is, is now entirely up to you.